Hi, this is Kyle from Quirk Tools, and today we're going to look at Wires, which is our awesome wireframing app that lets you create really simple wireframes right in your browser. And the thing that I really like most about Wires is that it doesn't require a plugin. So you can use the same wires on your desktop that you do on your iPad or your tablet or your Android phone. Whatever it is that you have, Wires is going to work for you because it's wireframes for the web built on the web. So the first thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to create a new wires project. You can see here, all you have to do is hit that new project button right on your wires project list. And it's going to take you to the new project page. And this is really simple to do. You just give it a project name. You can select the privacy to sort of control who can see it and the project type, which essentially is just going to set up your within your height of your wireframe documents that you're going to create. In this case, I'm creating an app called Songwriter's Friend. This is just sort of a mobile app that I came up with, and we're going to sort of use this as, as an example as we go through this stuff today. So the first thing you'll notice when you open your Wires project is uh, there's a couple common things that we use throughout all of our Quirk Tools apps. So you'll see at the top of the page you have the toolbar, and that's going to have all your buttons and your common things that you click on. And then over here on the right, you have what's called the sidebar, and there's a little tab there that you can click on to sort of toggle it back and forth. You can also use the B key on your keyboard if you're using a keyboard to toggle that back and forth. And there's some tabs along the top of the sidebar there that sort of look let you look at some different content about your project. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a widget to our canvas here. And you do that using this big uh, widgets menu. You can see there's a bunch of different widgets you can sort of choose from. But sort of the most basic one we're going to start with is this rectangle. So as you can see with widgets, you can basically drag them around your canvas. You can use the sidebar over on the right to sort of configure the way they look. Uh, but they make up the basic building blocks for how you can draw your wireframes into your wires document. So the next thing we're going to do is drop a new type of widget onto our canvas. We're going to choose the icon from the widgets menu this time. And I'm going to choose, uh, I'm going to do a search for audio. And that'll just bring back all of the icons that are related to that keyword. And you can see there, it changes the icon right on the canvas there. The nice thing about the icons is they're actually, they're probably a little more versatile than you might think at first because they actually allow you to draw shapes and draw all types of different things onto the canvas. They're not really just to be used for icons themselves. And we're going to drop another widget on here. This time I'm going to choose the menu widget. And this allows you to do both horizontal and vertical menus. You can see I can switch the orientation here and it actually changes how those menu items line up with each other. I'm going to resize it a little bit up in our header so it sort of fits uh, the space that we've allotted for it. And I'm going to come over here into the sidebar and actually change the links that appear inside of that widget. This is really easy to do. You just have these little menu items editor here. You just type in the text that you want to appear. If you want to add or remove items, you can use those buttons that appear at the bottom of the sidebar over there. You can even drag and drop the items to reorder them. Super, super easy to do this. Uh, maybe I decide I don't want the trash link, so I can go ahead and delete that off of the canvas as well. So my menu looks good. I think the next thing we're going to do is actually build out sort of the body area or the footer of our app that we're designing here. So rectangles are something you're going to use a lot. They sort of let you build the foundation for all the elements that appear. So I'm just going to drop another rectangle on here. Uh, and this particular app is going to maybe be an app where songwriters can record ideas and songs they come up with while they're on the road. So I'm going to add an icon to this rectangle. And this is basically going to be a big record button that you can hit and start recording when you do have an idea. And as you can see, just like before, I'm using that really versatile icon widget to actually make the record button so we can actually draw a shape onto the canvas. I also want to have a little bit of a label right underneath the uh, record button there. So I'm going to add the text widget. And you can see in the sidebar, you actually get a little WYSIWYG text editor. You can center align it to make sure it lines up to elements around it. Uh, you can change the, the font and the style and the size of your text. Really, really easy to do that. We're also going to add maybe just a little bit of a, a vertical rule here just to sort of give it some separation to make the record button look 
uh, very important. So um, the line widget, you can have just really simple horizontal vertical lines, lets you control that using the sidebar. And as you see here, I'm just sort of resizing that to fit our footer area. I also want to add maybe a list of previous recordings and I'm actually going to use the menu widget to do this. Again, a lot of these widgets, because we have so few, they're really meant to be very versatile. So you can see here I can kind of create a list using this menu widget, even though it's called a menu, you can actually end up using it for a lot of different things. So I'm going to give a couple titles here for the menu items to sort of show the, the titles of any previous recordings I've made. Maybe I'll make an additional one here on the bottom. And there's our list that appears at the bottom of the footer there. The last thing I'm going to do with our app here is I'm going to use that entire center area of the UI to represent a sound meter or sort of a decibel level of your current recording. And again, I'm going to use that icon widget, which sort of lets us do imagery. And as you'll see here, one of the great things about these icons is that they're all based on SVG, which is basically scalable images. So I can do a search for line here. And even though I've stretched that up, I've made it maybe not square. I've sort of skewed the image a little bit. It still has perfectly uh, clear edges and the clarity of the image doesn't degrade just because I'm resizing it because it's based on a scalable vector image. And certainly when you're designing a website or an app, uh, you might have multiple screens you want to sort of represent. So I'm actually going to create a new page inside of our wireframe and I'm going to call it recording. You can do that by going to this little blue icon up here, new page. You just type in a page name and you hit that create page button or you can just hit the enter key on your keyboard. So after you create the page, you can see it takes us over to that new page we just created called Recording. And at this point, I just want to point out that we left the previous page, but Wires never actually asked us if we wanted to save our changes. And that's actually intentional because one of the great things about Wires is it, is it keeps track of everything you do. You don't have to worry about saving. All you have to worry about is creating great wireframes. Anytime that you close your browser, you leave the page, even if you accidentally quit your browser and you're on another tab, Wires will save your changes to the server. It also does a save just in case you lose internet connectivity. It's going to save every 60 seconds or so. Um, but again, your browser keeps track of all that stuff. It makes it really easy for you to focus on the work and not focus on the technology you're using to create that work. So now that we have a new page here, you can see it's another blank canvas, but you can also do copy and paste inside of wires to sort of move your changes from one page to another or even copy within the same page. So I'm actually going to go back to our home page and I'm going to drag a box around our header area that we had previously created and I'm going to come up here and hit the copy button. And now that that's copied, you're going to see the paste button is going to sort of light up. I can go back to our recording page, which we just created, and I can hit that paste button to, to put our header that we had previously created right on the page. I'm going to create a title on this page as well using that text widget. So I'm just going to drop that in there. I'm going to move it down into sort of the body area and we'll actually resize it so that we can increase the size of that text using the WYSIWYG editor that appears in the sidebar over on the right. So you can see I can use the size menu here to, to change the size. Well, I have to select the text first, um, but we'll change the size here uh, using the M units. 2M, of course, just means twice the size that the normal text is. Um, and you can see that gives us a nice styled title right on the page there. I'm also going to add another rectangle here because what I want on this recording page, maybe this is sort of where you can go and view the details of a previous recording that you created. I'm going to create a little rectangle here uh, and this will actually have a play button in it. So you can come back to this page, you can view your recording, you can sort of hit the play button. And once again, I'm actually going to create the play button using that icon and I'm going to choose this arrow here, which is uh, we can sort of shrink down a little bit and sort of create that button that sort of looks like it's uh, a play button like you see on a remote control. Again, we'll add a little bit of a vertical rule here using the line widget just to sort of space that out a little bit more. 
and we're also going to add a, another icon widget. Um, now in this case I'm going to kind of I want to try to create a uh, sound meter again but maybe in a little bit of a different style so I'm going to choose these uh, sort of bar chart but I'm actually going to use the keys on my keyboard to nudge these next to each other as I copy and paste and again I'm just using keyboard shortcuts here you could also use the toolbar if you're on a touch screen but as you can see here I'm just sort of creating these little sound meters that appear. Um, you can even select them all and do a resize if you want. Uh, you know, wires, it's really designed to, to follow the patterns that you already use in applications like Photoshop and Illustrator and any other, t other type of creative app that you're going to use. So you can resize things. You can use shift to sort of maintain the aspect ratio. A lot of that stuff is also in place inside of wires. And before we finish up here, just to sort of show off a couple of the other widgets you can use, I'm going to drop in a tabs widget here. The tabs widget works a lot like the menu widget. It's just sort of a different presentation of those menu items. Um, so as you can see, I can drop that on the canvas, resize it a little bit. And in this case, maybe if we want a little bit more vertical room, I can actually grab that little tab on the bottom left of our canvas and just pull it to, to resize our canvas. And I'm going to rename the tabs here. Uh, again, this works just like that menu widget before. So we're actually just going to click on those, those tabs and change the titles. Uh, I'm going to create a tab for edit and a tab called add lyrics. And I'm going to change the active tab to edit so it looks like it's sort of selected on the page there. Inside of our tabs, I'm going to create a little bit of a form. I know forms are something that people use quite often when they're designing wireframes. It's something I've had to work on quite a bit. Um, so first I'm gonna add a little bit of a text label here. You guys have already seen that text widget, so I'm not gonna um, focus or spend a lot of time on that real quickly, but a new type of widget I'm gonna add here is gonna be the forms widget. And even though there's only one forms widget, it's actually a bunch of widgets in one because once you drop it to a page here, you can see by default, it sort of looks like a text box. But if you go over and change this field type, uh, on the right, you can actually change it into other widgets. So in this case, I'm going to leave it as a text box, but I'm actually going to copy and paste our label and our text box. Um, and then I'll just paste it. I'm going to move it down a little bit to create the next field. And this time I'm going to change that second forms widget. Um, we're going to change this to recording type, and then that'll actually be a select or a drop down box. Um, so I'm going to change the field label and you'll see as soon as I change the type here, the presentation of that field changes and it adds a little drop down arrow to the right of that label. And finally, I'm going to add a button, which is another type of widget that we have. Um, really, it looks a lot like a rectangle. It's just sort of got a, a little bit of a different presentation to make it look a little more 3D. And this particular button, I'm just going to resize and we're going to call it delete. So we can say that's how you can delete a recording once you've made it. And the very last thing I'm going to show is um, sort of showing some interaction here. So wireframes are really useful because not only do they allow you to sort of visually organize your UI that you're going to create or your components that you're going to put into any type of design, be it for a website or an app or any other type of electronic interface, um, Oftentimes, one thing that's really important to capture in the wireframes is what happens when the user interacts with that content. So in this case, we're actually going to use this tabs widget as an example, and we're just going to create another page that sort of shows what it might look like if you were to click on that tab that says add lyrics. And in this case, I'm going to hit control A on my keyboard to actually select all of the widgets on the page. I'm going to copy them using that copy there and I'm going to create a new page. Um, this one we're going to call add lyrics because again I just want to show that other tab and I'm just going to paste all of those widgets right on the page here uh, but after we've pasted it I'll actually change that selected tab so it looks like add lyrics is selected and I'm going to delete the contents of that tab so we're just going to sort of change what it looks like when you go to this tab of the interface. I'm actually going to select the text box. Um, let's rename it here to lyrics. And I'm going to change the text box so that instead of a text box, it'll, it can actually look like maybe a text area or a rich text editor where people can type in 
that information. So the field type is going to be text area. You can see it sort of adds a little scroll bar to the right. And I'll just type in some dummy text here um, that's going to appear inside of there. So that sort of shows us where those lyrics can be typed in. And finally, now that we have all these widgets built, we can actually link them together to make them sort of an interactive prototype. So anytime you have an icon or a menu or tabs or anything in wires, you can also create links inside of that. So in this case, I'm going to select that tabs widget. We're going to go to the edit uh, link or the edit item there and we're gonna use this little icon to the right the little link icon and it actually this little drop down allows you to select any other pages that you've already created inside of your wireframe so really easily I can create a link between the edit and the add lyrics pages I can go back to our recording page and also add a link to add lyrics from there and then that way whenever we share this wireframe whenever somebody comes here they can sort of click back and forth between those two tabs and it appears as if um, it's actually you know that interaction is actually working so you can create that interaction inside of wires just using these different pages likewise I can also link our home icon up here um, so you can see you can just select that little audio icon. I can use this drop down here and it actually creates a link so that you can click on the icon to go back to the home page. And I'm also going to do this on the add lyrics page just to make sure that whether you're on either of those tabs, you can click on that icon to sort of go back home. And finally, back on our home page, I'm just going to create a link down here on this menu item so that you can actually click on that first list item at the bottom and go to our recording page just to sort of link all of these pages together so it's a real sort of working website. And now I'm actually going to close the sidebar. And you can still get to your pages with the sidebar closed using this little menu up here. But I'm actually going to come up and click on lock widgets and what this does is it lets you click on the links that you've created and actually use your wireframe as more of a prototype so when the widgets are locked you can click on any of these blue links and you can see it's going from page to page sort of showing me that different interaction that I've created and this is exactly what your clients or what other people are going to see if you actually share your wireframe with them. If you send them a link, they come to that link, they're automatically sort of in that locked mode and it allows them to sort of click around and use this more like a website than a drawing tool. And to show you just a little bit of how that sharing works, we'll come up to our toolbar and click on this project settings link that appears there. And on the project settings page, you can configure your project name, the privacy. Uh, you can see there on the bottom, you can come back here and change the default page size if you want to do that. Uh, but perhaps more importantly, you can invite people to share with this project. And so all you have to do here is actually type in an email address, just one per line. It gives you instructions there. And you just hit the Save Changes button on the bottom of this page. And it's going to tell you, hey, we sent out one invitation to share your wires project. It's going to send that person an email. It has a link in there, the permanent web address for your project, where they can come and they can view that project. And once you're sharing with somebody, you're sharing a project with other people, you can find in the sidebar when you're viewing your wires project, um, one thing that's going to become very useful is the comments tab. So people can come in here, they can type in comments, they can hit that submit comment, and it builds a comment feed right on your wireframe. And the comment feed isn't just for this page, it's for the whole wireframe. And to sort of make things more specific to a page, if you're talking about a button or something you like, there's this little locate button. And you can actually click on the wireframe to locate your comment. And that sort of references a location in your comment. So you can say, hey, I really like this recording button. Let's um, sort of submit this comment. And it actually adds a little uh, note onto your wireframe so that when you're viewing comments, you can see the location where that person is sort of talking about right on top of your wireframe. And there you have it. That is a wires project from start to finish. Just a little introduction into what you can create using the application wires by Quirk Tools.